true. We have one who can see. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're doing a small claims lawsuit to the courts for automobile loans. Now, hold on. Let you know this will be available to the public, all of our clients who have car loans, and you for free. You don't have to pay anybody for no documentation. You don't have to pay me for the work. I've been working on this for a week now. And now I'm proofreading and going over the document. It's 29 pages long, y'all, because it's got interrogatories and discovery mixed in. Now, all of that's explained in the document because it's small claims court. Small claims court is supposed to be less stringent, less complicated. But guess what? You can bring a complicated matter in small claims court. That's your right, not theirs. Okay? They don't get to tell you what's complicated. You get to tell them what's complicated. Oh, that's too complicated for me, Your Honor. Nope, can't handle that. That's too much. Small claims court was designed for you. <clears throat> it wasn't designed for them. Go ahead. You can tell that to them. This was designed for people like me. The Superior Court wasn't designed for people like me. That was designed for corporations. Hey, don't get up in there and talk in that sovereign citizen stuff. It was designed for corporations, ladies and gentlemen. That's why lawyers are allowed to be there. Remember, lawyers can only represent corporations. You don't believe me? <laughs> Go read their rules. Corporations must be represented by an attorney. What do you think they created attorneys for? Man. So once you understand, then you understand. You understand? Now, look, I'm going to let it read. And once it finished reading, I'm going to conclude this video and go on about my editing. But I want you to hear what it says just at the beginning. So one second. I'm going to start right here. I'm talking about juror misdiction. This court has jurisdiction over the matter pursuant to the state's constitution specifically regarding delegation of authority over matters of controversy and the right of a party to petition the government for a redress of grievances. As the actions and transactions giving rise to this complaint occurred within this jurisdiction, and shall be established, the court has accepted such responsibility in defense of the constitutional securities and protections delineated within the instrument itself as a matter of public trusteeship. This petition includes interrogatories, discovery requests, facts, and conclusions of law as determined by the law of the land, the law of the territory, and the judiciary. Now, you see what I just did there? I said, Your Honor, you got jurisdiction because you took an oath to the Constitution. So shut up with all that other bull. Okay, that's that's what you're saying. Then you're saying, hey, well, hold, hold on now. This petition is not just a simple petition. I incorporated other things into it so as to save time. I incorporated a discovery request and I incorporated interrogatories. See, in some places, in small claims court, you have to ask for permission to do discovery. No, you don't. It's small claims. Of course you get to do discovery. How else are you going to bring your case? How else are you going to prove your case? I just did that for a young man who tried to take advantage of me, okay? I put a discovery request and I asked for leave and I said, since the attorney was coming into the case and lying and bringing up stuff saying it wasn't true, and that's, hey, look, ladies and gentlemen, once you bring a claim and they come in with, well, this isn't true and we deny this and we deny that, well, thank you, Your Honor, they just gave me the right to ask for discovery. Yeah, they said they deny it. And once they deny it, I won't deny it. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Once they deny it, then that gives me the right to prove my case. And I can't prove it without discovery. So thank you, opposing counsel, for giving me the right to ask for discovery. That's a technicality, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you get around the discovery issue. So once they come in and they bring up one objection to any point you make, you have the right to interrogatory them and ask for discovery. Yes, pay attention, giving you shortcuts, things that I've learned over the years, you know what I'm saying? The years and years and years, so pay attention. Judiciary. The purpose of each of these is to streamline the rebuttal of the presumptions and a conscience effort to not take up valuable time in the exercise of the inalienable rights which protects the constitutionally secured right to pursue happiness through access and due process of the law. All you're saying is, hey, your honor, I'm only trying to exercise my unalienable, and we're going to get rid of the inalienable because that, that, that word don't appear. It is unalienable. Okay? Unalien 
meaning they can't put a lien on your rights. Get off my rights. Hey, you! Get off my mountain. Anyway, you're just trying to, okay, bring me down in the pursuit of happiness through access to the court and due process of law. You don't need to say to the court. They know exactly what you're trying to do. You're trying to gain access. Now, Watch how this matter is being brought to the court's attention. I want y'all to pay attention to the wording. This matter is specific to the specifically intended issue. Reference issues are for reference purposes only and not to be construed otherwise, as rights are reserved in perpetuity, and parties delineated herein as indicated within the caption. Any Hold on now. Want to make sure y'all understand what we just say it. We said, we're, we're bringing a specific issue to this court. So just because we reference other things, don't y'all dare say we done brought that up in here and we are trying this. No, we're not trying it. What we're doing is, again, I'm going to say it so you understand, Your Honor, we are being very specific. So don't construe it. The information is for reference purposes only. We're just referencing that. We are not addressing that. That's what you're saying. Man, is that what they, that's what you're saying in here? That's what the party who putting this in there saying. Hold on now. Any other materials are for reference purposes only and do not serve as allegations, but, save to support the right to bring forth such a complaint in the limited capacity herein specified intended and for no other purposes shall it be construed. Okay, so you're saying I'm only bringing it in here in the limited, specific framework in which I am mentioning it. Don't you sit up here and try to construe it otherwise. Don't you sit up here and put words in my mouth. Tell me what I intended to do. This is what my intentions are. Ho I mean, uh, prostitute. I mean, I mean, uh, you punk. You know, that's that's what you're saying. Okay, hold on. Now we ain't finished. Now, got to talk about venue and jurisdiction again. One second. This venue has jurisdiction over the matter because the alleged offenses took place within this jurisdiction and slash or the parties reside in this jurisdiction and slash. Or Wait, no, I don't want to be a cuz. No, I'm sorry. We we ain't gonna be cuz. We gonna be as okay we're gonna do stevie wonder and george michael and and that that girl mary j blige we're gonna do ass well around the world the earth is keeps revolving that ass that's we're gonna do that ass right there as the alleged offenses took place within this jurisdiction and slash or the parties reside in this jurisdiction and slash or the parties have waived any right to challenge this jurisdiction ladies and gentlemen when corporations agree to sue and be sued, especially those corporations that have been around for greater than the last seven years, they have agreed to sue and be sued. Why? Because the moment they become a corporation, that's their agreement. Pay attention now. Pay attention. And because they agree to sue and be sued, they waive their rights to not be sued in this jurisdiction. The actions and allegations took place in this jurisdiction. Oh, no, Your Honor. The moment they sent me that stuff in the mail, mm -mm, they entered this jurisdiction. They sent me communications in the mail to this jurisdiction. And because they did so in this jurisdiction, they are bound by the jurisdictional requirements because of their communication that was received through the mail. Well, that's where they're supposed to. They could have contacted me, Your Honor. Carrier pigeon, but that still would have established jurisdiction. See, that's the part I'm trying to tell you, Your Honor. They can't get around the jurisdictional issue. Where they reside, no, it's not where they reside. It's where the incident took place. You, 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 you write to rules and stuff and say only where the defendant resides. That's a lie. It's where the incident took place. Once they come into this jurisdiction, they've established being in this jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because y'all did that, Your Honor. I didn't do that. Y'all made these rules. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on one second. You're going to get some judges who are going to argue with you. Don't argue back. You'd simply tell them, no, I will not allow you to hijack my case. This is my case, not yours. If you got an objection, state your objection on the record. But we are going to proceed with my exercise of my right. You see, Your Honor, want to make sure this is not a trial right now. This is pre-trial. So we will handle that during the trial. But no, you don't get to overrule me. You don't get to rule over me. This is me exercising a right. Now, if you go to the First Amendment, let's go there. If you go to the First Amendment, it says Congress shall make no law. <clears throat> That's right, abridging, because you're prohibited from doing so. 
Read the First Amendment again, Your Honor. You, apparently, you haven't read it. So you don't get to exercise authority over my right to access the court. Because one of those rights is to petition government for redistribution. So no, you don't get to overrule that right under any circumstances. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be your appeal. Why? If they rule against you under any circumstances, you're going to go after the judge's bond too. We're going to get to that in a second. But remember, what I just stated was law. The First Amendment is what secures your right to access the court, any court. The court doesn't get to overrule you. There is nothing in law that allows the court to rule over you. Isn't it a democracy? Well, it's a, it's a, demo, demo, uh, it's a, a, demo, um, a, repub, uh, uh, oh, it's a democracy. That's right. It's a demo republicratic KC. Yeah, that's, they try to come up with all kinds of names saying what type of government this is supposed to be. Ladies and gentlemen, the First Amendment tells you what type of government it is. It's the type of government where they don't get to rule over the people. You don't believe me? Go back and read the First Amendment. Break it down. It says Congress shall make no law which abridges the right to the people to speak, to practice religion, to put out information in the press, and pay attention, to peacefully assemble. And they got one more. There's a fifth one to petition the government for redress, which means they have to correct the wrongs if it's within their power, and they have to permit sanctions and compensation for the wrongs committed against you. And government would be, pay attention, the courts. Not that you are submitting to their rulership. No, 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 no. So long as they do their job, you don't have to submit to nothing. Do your job, Your Honor. Sorry about that, homie. But yeah, you stuck. Constitution does that. And if you violate my rights, Your Honor, then I'm going to have to file a claim against your bond. So you go right ahead and do whatever it is you think you're going to do. I know, I know, I know you think you're on the right, but I'm still going to file a claim against your bond for every violation. So you might get five or six claims. So be careful because I hear three claims and you you pretty much unbondable. So don't, don't play with me because I ain't got time to be playing games. And I will file a claim against your bond. And I will sue your bond in this courtroom. And yes, in your very same courtroom, which you will be having to recuse yourself. Yeah, because of your, your association. Y'all been getting away with that, talking about you, 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 you can be uh, 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 impartial. No, you can't be impartial when you're involved in something. Come on now. Especially when, 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 when you, your, your, your jeopardy's at stake. Mother, I'm sorry. I digress. One second. This venue has jurisdiction over the matter, as the alleged offenses took place within this jurisdiction and slash or, the parties reside in this jurisdiction, and slash or, the parties have waived any right to challenge this jurisdiction. The defendants are the bond's public officials, the car dealership and a financial institution are registered with- No, the defendants are the bonds of the public officials. No, I thought you said you're doing a car dealership. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to explain how a car dealership is a public official. How a financial corporation is a public official. Watch this. Pay, 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 pays attention. The public officials, the car dealership and a financial institution are registered with the Secretary of State, an instrumentality of the state. Providing a public service as creatures of the state, only a duty, their chartered power and existence to the state, and are required by the Constitution to be bondage. Give me one second. This right here, I got to get rid of that. It's not supposed to be only a difference. O-W-I-N-G. Owing. Give me one second. I did that. That's not owing. Wake up. Owing. Well, I did stop listening. I did spell it right. My bad. Owing a duty and their chartered power and existence to the state. That's Redfield versus Fisher, what stated the principle that corporations are creatures of the state, i.e. creatures of the state, owing their duty and chartered power and existence to the state. Go back, read Redfield versus Fisher. 1925, State of Washington. 
Now, you're not using that as a precedent-setting case. You're using it as a precedent-setting principle of fact, not principle of law, principle of fact. Corporations are created by the state. They can only operate within the scope of which the state gives them authority. That makes them public servants. They're creatures of the state. Pay attention, y'all. And as a creature of the state, the state owes its duty to the people. Don't, don't play with me. Want to get technical with words? I can get just as technical. Hold on now. A duty, their chartered power and existence to the state, and are required by the Constitution to be bonded should they harm one of the people or their posterity. This requirement is implied in the First Amendment right to petition for redress of grievances and the prohibition against Congress making a law prohibiting and slash or abridging such. Ladies and gentlemen, there you go. That's the end of explaining what this document explains at the very beginning. You know that a judge is going to tell you, no, you can't do this and no, you can't do that. And when you do an appeal, you're going to take this first section and you're going to go to one of the AI models and say, hey, I need to create a notice of appeal based on this information. And then you're going to do an appeal brief based on the same information. I mean, literally, it is just that simple. And when you appeal in small claims court, you're only appealing to the, the superior court of the state the so-called county district court or the county circuit court. That's all. It depends on how it's named in your state, but it's just a superior court. You're only appealing to the judge. And when the judge overrules you, now you're appealing to the appeals court from small claims court. But you take it all the way to the state Supreme Court and you stick with your rights that are violated and what you have a right to. And again, as we stated, Pay attention so that you get it, because some of y'all are not understanding this right here. This requirement is implied in the First Amendment right to petition for redress of grievances. You have a right to petition the court for redress of grievance, and they are required by law in their authority and capacity to correct the wrong. And if they fail to correct the wrong, they can't use technicalities. Nothing in the First Amendment gives them the right to use technicalities. Redress does not mean, let's get technical, technical. Let's get technical. I want to get technical. Let me hear your technicalities. Okay, they don't get to get technical, people. They don't get to get technical. There is nothing in the law that allows them to get technical with you when it comes to your rights. You can get technical with them. Why? Because they have policies and procedures, and that's how they set up those policies and procedures to get technical. But you need to let them know, sorry, this is when a right's involved. You cannot convert it to a privilege, so you don't get to get technical with my rights. You don't get to tell me what my rights are. I tell you what my rights are. You see, I'm the only one who can exercise my right. You can't exercise my right for me. What do you think you're doing? Y'all need to understand the law. They don't get to exercise your rights for you. They don't get to assign an attorney to you because they feel like it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's 18 minutes of your time that you'll never be able to get back. I'm sorry. But if you pay attention to the things that I just stated in here, go over it a couple of times, you'll understand how to be talking for yourself in court. You'll understand how to stress certain points. Yeah, it won't. It's not designed to cover every situation, but you know what it's designed to do? Stop them in their tracks when they start speaking that nonsense to you that they practiced and planned. See, you guys don't understand. They go to seminars listening to videos such as mine, and you better believe they listen to my videos. That's why they know who I am. To try to overcome it, my job is to rebut their presumption, and I keep hearing about their presumptions over and over and over again. 19 minutes. I got to go, y'all. Bye-bye.